For some 200 years, lighthouses have been coastal sentinels, standing guard, preventing shipping disasters along the dangerous North Carolina Outer Banks, an area also known as the Graveyard of the Atlantic. Our first stop, the Currituck Lighthouse, not far from the Virginia State Line. Finished in 1875, it took one million bricks and two years to build, completing a chain of lighthouses along the North Carolina coast by filling in a previously dark 80-mile gap. To distinguish it from the other Outer Banks lights, the 162-foot structure was left unpainted, which really gives a sense of just how many bricks went into building it. The Currituck light can be spotted quite a ways out to sea. 18 nautical miles, a land mile is shorter than a nautical mile, so it's actually 21 land mile, or international miles, I guess they're called. We've got a first order Fresnel lens in there. According to the United States Lighthouse Society, we're one of 10 lighthouses that have an original first order lens that still function, that's still put to work. Uh, we're painted red brick, and that's our day marker. Every lighthouse has to be identifiable when you're sailing in the day. Everybody has a white light at night. You have to give the impression of a flash at night. So that's how people tell what lighthouse they're sailing by in 1892. So we flashed at that point up until 1939, five seconds of red and 90 seconds of white. Uh, in 1939, we were electrified and we went to three seconds on and 17 off and our lens no longer rotates. And the stairs are, are the original stairs though. But once you've gone up and down the whole way, you'll have done 440 stairs. But we always say 214 stairs because the, the, plan, the architectural plan for say 214 stairs. The Lighthouse Keeper's House, a Victorian stick-style dwelling, was built using pre-cut materials which were shipped in on a barge and assembled on site. In 1876, when the Keeper's House was completed, two keepers and their family shared the duplex in the isolated seaside setting. The keeper's job ended after the lighthouse was automated and attendants were no longer needed to clean the lenses, trim the wicks, fuel the lamp, and wind the clockwork mechanism which rotated the beacon. Today, the house is in the midst of restoration by the Outer Banks Conservationists, a nonprofit group dedicated to preserving this historic landmark. Moving south, the next beacon of the Atlantic we visit is the Bonny Island Lighthouse. Called third times the charm, it is the third structure to stand guard along this region of the Outer Banks, the first being abandoned due to poor construction, the second one was blown up by the Confederate Army. Construction on the current lighthouse, which is 156 feet tall, started in 1871 and it was first lit October 1st, 1872. Crystal Nelson is with the National Park Service and is assigned to the Body Island Lighthouse. The original name, Bodies Island, is today pronounced Body. The name, it is thought to be derived from a family surname. Also, legend has it that it is because of the shipwrecks and the bodies that floated ashore to Body Island. The lighthouse, with 60,000 visitors annually, became part of the National Park Service in 1953, and the Keeper's House has undergone some restoration. The tower itself is closed to the public, while the stairs and the rest of the interior await restoration. Continuing south, we make our final stop at the tallest, most photographed, and most famous lighthouse in the country, the Cape Hatteras Lighthouse. This beautiful structure with its distinctive stripes is the second lighthouse to stand guard over Cape Hatteras. The first lighthouse was constructed in 1803. It was made out of sandstone and it stood 90 feet tall. The lighthouse was actually too short to be seen from the ocean and it blended in because it was constructed out of sandstone. The United States Congress authorized funding to build this lighthouse and this lighthouse was completed in 1870. In 1934, we received electricity at the lighthouse, and the light continued to be able to be seen up until 20 miles into the ocean. Life on the island was fairly isolated. The lighthouse keepers were out here pretty much by themselves, and their families would also live out here with the lighthouse keepers. The children would play with each other. They had gardens that they tended in the summers, and it was a big deal to receive supplies from the mainland. 
There was actually concern about the erosion that was taking place on the beach in the 1950s. And so finally in 1999, they began the actual move of the Cape Hatteras Lighthouse after years of discussion and debate. The Outer Banks Lighthouses, beautiful images of a bygone era. After nearly 140 years, and despite the advent of satellite navigation aids, they are still considered essential to maritime navigation. The lightkeepers are now gone, but these romantic structures still stand guard, shining their beacons each night over the graveyard of the Atlantic, continuing to stand the test of time along North Carolina's Outer Banks.